Welcome back to PowerPlay. Our Tuesday trio of all party MPs are safely ensconced away from me in the foyer of the House of Commons, only for this day only, but there they are. There's common sense conservative James Rajat, no nonsense new Democrat Megan Leslie, no Dodger <laughs> Roger, as in cousin of the Liberal Party. Welcome to you all from a distance. Um, Megan, hey, first to you. Uh, Commissioner of the Environment says taxpayers are the cleanup crews for all these major spills. How did we get so out of date and how, why so far behind in setting a, a reasonable liability for these companies in case of a disaster? Well, I think it's easy to figure that out when you look at how the Conservatives have actually been treating environmental legislation. The Environment Commissioner's report shows that the development of our natural resources is far outpacing the environmental legislation. Uh, the Environment Commissioner actually said we have uh, a resource boom, but there isn't the requisite environmental regulation boom uh, to follow, and I'm worried that we will have both an environmental bust and an economic bust, because really uh, the report was clear about the fact this isn't just about our oil, uh, our oil, our, our, our soil, thank you, um, and water and air. This is also about the fact that our trading partners Will, are they catching on to the fact that we don't have the right environmental regulation in place and we are at risk of losing those markets? I think I could hear your eyes rolling there, James, when she was talking. I couldn't see you. Uh, what what do you oil. think is the reason for this? <laughs> I, I would never roll my eyes out. No, no I, I think, obviously, to respond on, I mean, the Environment Commissioner raised some issues with respect to protection of marine habitat, with respect to uh, pipelines, with respect to, you know, oil spills. And, in fact, these, these issues are being addressed. In the last budget, in the 2012 budget, there were some investments made in all these areas. And with respect to strengthening pipeline security, with respect to... Uh, protection of the environment. So there are investments being made and, and as the Prime Minister said today these issues will be addressed going forward. So uh, I think you know we want to thank him for his work. He's obviously moving on to a new position and thank him for highlighting these issues which in fact the government is already beginning to address. Roger, you live in Cape Breton. Uh, there's offshore oil or tankers go by there and offshore oil is it's there and as well. How, why should any taxpayer liability be left? Why aren't corporations and oil companies responsible for the full liability of any pollution or breakups that they uh, cause off the coast of uh, Canada? Well, I, I would think that's where Canadians are. They believe in polluter pay, and, uh, but the regulations just haven't kept up. And if anybody was surprised by the commissioner's report and what uh, was said in the, in the report, uh, they must have been living on Mars for the past seven years. I don't think it came as a surprise to anybody in the environmental community, but I, I think probably what we can anticipate is a 500-page omnibus bill that covers all the shortcomings in environmental legislation uh, in the country. You think, Megan? You're living on Mars. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, Megan, I do want to go back to you, though. I mean, Roger's got a point there. Maybe it shouldn't surprise anyone. Were you surprised by anything in this report? Oh, uh, well, I mean, we ha the NDP actually talked about uh, this liability issue two years ago. We had, uh, we had a motion in the House raising this. We raised it tons of times. So that didn't surprise me too much. Um, I guess the, the, the strength with which the Environment Commissioner said, look, uh, we are outpacing our environmental regulation. Those were really stark words for him to say. Um, and, and he talked about being concerned over and over again. I mean, he's an auditor. He's supposed to just, just the facts, ma'am. Uh, but he really, he was really clear about this is, we're at a crisis moment here. And that did surprise me. But he was also clear in saying that the government is, in fact, beginning to address this and is, in fact, moving in the right direction. And I think my colleagues would want to point out that in the last budget, in Budget 2012, there were investments made in all of the areas to, to address the concerns that were raised in the Environment Commissioner's report with respect to protection of marine areas, with respect to pipeline safety, with respect to oil spills. So these, these, it's right for him to raise these issues, absolutely, but the government is in fact addressing them. But well, one thing that struck me, James, and I want to stay with you on this one briefly, is that he, the commissioner found that these changes to the Navigable Waters Act and fishing protection of the protection of fishing habitat were all done without the bureaucrats having been aware of what impact that would have. And now they're playing catch up. Why isn't that a little backwards? Aren't you supposed to study the impact before you legislate change? But, but the changes to the Navigable Waters Act, both in the recent uh, budget implementation legislation as well as before, I mean, these, were, these actually came out of the departments. And with the Navigable Waters Protection Act, I mean, it was, it was municipalities, both urban and rural, 
who were saying to the federal government that you have to change this. It was a federation of Canadian municipalities, organization like the Saskatchewan Association of Rural Municipalities, saying you have to return the Navigable Waters Act to navigation. And you have environmental acts like the Canadian Environmental Protection Act that deals with environmental protection, but you have to let the Navigable Waters Act deal with navigation and let the environmental acts deal with the environmental issues. Okay, I want to move along because Roger Kuzner was a very active uh, bunny in question period, yelling up and down about this. The government's advertising campaign continues uh, on the economic action plan. The average ad spending by the Human Resources and Skill Development Canada is up 72 percent in the last four years. Finance up 58 percent. Canada Revenue Agency almost triple. I got to ask you, Roger. I mean, can you fathom why they're advertising so much for a program that's more or less been wrapped up for a couple of years now, hasn't it? I, I thought my analogy was uh, fairly appropriate. Aaron Weary didn't uh, agree with me on that, but I, I thought it was okay. You know, they're, they're uh, uh, in, in the midst of uh, uh, the, the current state where they continue to uh, put forward record deficits. Uh, you would think that they would be trying to trim in areas that, let's call them non-essential. Um, and I know that Tony Clement said today, that uh, they're spending less than the Liberals, and that is an absolute mistruth. The, the largest the Liberals ever spent, back when there were surpluses being registered, uh, was $111 million. Uh, they've currently registered $130 million. So, you, you know, let's stick with the facts here. But an increase of 72%, while this minister guts her department, the one that's most egregious, though, the one that's most egregious is the uh, $10 million that's been spent over the last three years by Veterans Affairs that amount would just top up the last post fund so that veterans could get a dignified burial just right, okay? But, in, in, you know, instead, um, you know, they're, they're spending those types of dollars. So I, I think Canadians uh, have the right to ask that question about where their tax dollars are going. Well, okay, Megan, I want to get your thoughts on this, keeping in mind that I think ads on television are a great idea, and I don't care who pays for it, because <laughs> I work for an ad. <laughs> I work for a channel, but go ahead, Megan. What's your take? Touche. You know what? I actually think that uh, government ads are a good thing, too, especially if they're doing things like helping Canadians understand government services like EI, you know, uh, the, the way